Good afternoon. My name is Dominique Damien. I'm a safety director with Washington Farm Bureau. Today we're talking about energy control. This training is intended for employees, but it is not comprehensive. It does not apply to the specific hazards at your workplace or the machines or equipment at your workplace. Um, this applies to the service and maintenance of machines and equipment, including piping systems, if employees could be injured by the unexpected energization or startup of the machine or equipment or release of stored energy. This training is for awareness purposes only and does not fulfill all energy control training requirements. An authorized employee is a person who has been properly trained in lockout takeout procedures for on the machine and machines and equipment that is to be serviced. Authorized employees will need specific training from the employer about the equipment for which the energy control procedures will be used, the energy sources, how to notify all employees, how to lock out those energy sources, the devices to be used, and how to re-energize the equipment once the lockout is over. An affected employee is a person who operates the machinery or equipment but does not perform lockout procedures or a person who works in the area where the machines are being maintained. Um, this employee also needs additional training on the awareness level of what to do when they see a lock, uh, lockout device. And we're talking about lockout takeout today because second defaults struck by or caught in accidents are second highest for both claim count and for claim costs in agriculture. Accidents involving lack of energy control are quick, unexpected, and result in severe injuries like amputation or death. <clears throat> and there's several types of energy sources. Some are more obvious than others, like mechanical. Mechanical energy is like moving parts. So look for moving parts. That would be mechanical energy. There's live or stored electricity. Hydraulic energy from compressed or moving liquids. Compressed air or gas for pneumatic energy. Gravitational for raised objects that can fall. Thermal from extremely hot liquids or cold gases. And radiation like lasers, microwaves, ultraviolet, and x-rays. All of these energy sources can be stored or active. Like fluids or gases may be still under pressure even after a lockout. Electricity can be stored in batteries or capacitors. And machine machinery may be storing energy in springs or gravity. Your employer has specific procedures for each piece of equipment that falls under these requirements. The procedures should include the energy sources and their locations, the type of devices used. The procedures will include how to notify employees, de-energize all energy sources, dissipate the energy, lock out the locations of energy sources, and test the equipment to make sure that there's no more energy uh, within it. There are, uh, there is an, uh, an exemption. Similar machines and equipment may be covered by a single written procedure if all of the following apply. If they use the same type and magnitude of energy, they have the same type or similar types of controls. And the specific machines or equipment covered by the procedures are identified by at least the type and location. So all other uh, pieces of equipment should have their own procedures for how to lock out but uh, you can group some machines or equipment together um, if they are similar enough.
And then there doesn't need to be a specific procedure if all of the following apply. The machine or equipment has a single energy source that is easily identified and can be isolated. The machine or equipment is completely de-energized and deactivated by is isolating and locking out the energy source. There is no stored or residual energy that can be a hazard to employees and the machine or equipment cannot reaccumulate such energy after it has been shut down. The energy source can be locked out with one single lockout device. The machine or equipment is isolated from the energy source and locked out during service or maintenance. The authorized employee doing the service or maintenance has exclusive control over the lockout device. The service or maintenance does not create a hazard for other employees and the machine or equipment has never been unexpectedly energized or activated during service or maintenance. And then there may be times that equipment maintenance, servicing or repair, repair requires more than one person to be involved. That's when you do a group lockout. Group work must be coordinated so everyone knows that what the other is doing. There should be a primary authorized employee to be assigned who has overall responsibility. And then each authorized person puts their own unique lock or, or tag uh, on the equipment. No lockout or tag out device should be removed until the work is done. And then the primary person is the last person to remove their lock or tag. There may be times or situations that tag out devices are the only way to prevent employee exposure to hazardous energy when there is no way to, other way to lock out the equipment. Tags may also be used as a visual warning when lockout procedures are being used. Um, tags are only warning devices and do not provide the same level of physical restraint as a lock and may give a false sense of security. If you're using a tag instead of a lock, they cannot be removed without approval of the person responsible for it. They cannot be bypassed, ignored, or otherwise defeated. They must be legible and understandable, and they must be made of material that withstands the environmental conditions they're exposed to. And then they must be securely attached to the energy isolating device so they can't be accidentally removed. And there's lots of types of devices. So if uh, you can't find something for the piece of equipment that you need to do service on, double check to make sure there's not anything that will be able to work. Devices can be keys or combination locks or blank flanges and piping. It usually includes a tag or other notice that identifies the person who's authorized to remove the lock. The, although the tags aren't required, as long as there's another way to communicate that their equipment is being locked out and who the authorized person is. And that is it. Without any other questions, um, we will end here. Um, but feel free to reach out if you do think of something later. Um, my name is Dominique. I'm out of Lacey. Jeff is out of Kennewick. And then Luis is out of Sunnyside. Thank you for being here today and have a good rest of your day. Bye.